Chapter 18 What are you raving about now? Where's Caroline? Danielle demanded. Dee stopped. She had to leave. Leave? Danielle pointed to Caroline's car. So what's this doing here? She didn't have to leave, Dee. I don't believe you. Where is she? It doesn't matter. Dee stepped up to Danielle. I want to talk to you. Great, Danielle thought bitterly. Just what I need. I haven't got time. Besides, listen to me, Dee snapped. Time is exactly what you won't have. If you don't leave the band. Danielle leaned back against Caroline's car and crossed her arms. Look, Dee, I'm not quitting the band, no matter how much you want me to. I'm sorry you aren't the only lead singer anymore, and I'm sorry you're jealous about kitten me. I really am, but the doctor thinks the band is the best thing for me, and... Leave it, Dee shouted. I'm warning you. Danielle straightened up, her hands clenched into fists. Rage swept through her like a burning fire. What's happening to me, she wondered. I, I feel so out of control. With a savage snarl, she dived at Dee. Her fingers curled into claws. She aimed in straight for Dee's throat. With an angry shriek, Dee fought back. She grabbed Danielle's hair and twisted it in her hands. Danielle cried out in pain. She jammed one hand under Dee's chin and shoved as hard as she could. Dee gasped, staggered back. Danielle leaped at her, knocking Dee to her knees. Why? Why am I doing this? What's wrong with me? Snarling, she wrestled Dee to the ground. The gravel cut into her elbows, but the pain didn't matter. Winning did. She had to beat Dee. Dee gasped in pain as the gravel slashed her cheek. Blood. Danielle could smell it. She could almost taste it. She wanted it. Wanted to feel it in her mouth again. Salty. Thick. Delicious. She heard herself howl again, howling for the blood like an animal. An animal. What was wrong with her? Snarling, she dug her claw-like fingers into Dee's throat. It's just like my fantasy, Danielle thought. But it's not a fantasy. It's real. I'm going to kill her. Kill her! Chapter 19 The smell of blood made her pulse race, her heart pound. I must taste it. I must taste it now. Uttering a howl of attack, Danielle died for Dee's throat again. Dee kicked out wildly, slammed a foot heavily into Danielle's stomach. Dee? Danny? Stop it! Danielle heard Caroline's startled cries. Dee leaped on top of her. I must taste it, Danielle thought, panting loudly. I must taste the blood. Stop! Caroline screamed. What are you doing? Are you crazy? You're going to kill each other! Danielle felt Dee's weight being lifted from her. She scrambled to her feet. What's going on? Caroline demanded, her blue eyes wide with shock and anger. She kept a tight hold on Dee's arm. What happened? Ask her, Dee shouted breathlessly. I tried to talk to her, and she came at me like, like I don't know what. Like an animal, Danielle thought, panting. She bent over, pressing her hands on her knees, struggling to catch her breath. Caroline narrowed her eyes at Dee. You know you're not supposed to get Danny upset. What did you say to her? Nothing, Dee muttered. She yanked her arm free. Nothing at all. Forget it. With a last angry glance at Danielle, Dee spun away and ran at full speed out of the parking lot. When she had vanished from sight, Caroline turned to Danielle. Wow, that was really horrible. Are you okay? Danielle nodded, still breathing hard. Where... Where did you go? I got bored, so I walked over to the river, Caroline explained. She looped her arm around Danielle's shoulder. Are you okay? What did Dee say to you? She told me to get out of the band, and I... Danielle took a deep breath. I jumped on her, Caroline, just as she said. Don't get upset. She made you angry, that's all. Angry? Danielle shook her head. I was more than angry. I... I wanted to kill her. Yeah, well, I don't blame you, Caroline said. She didn't have any business telling you to leave the band. She's supposed to... She broke off, biting her lip. Supposed to what? She's supposed to do what's best for the band, Caroline finished quickly. Dee is out of control. No, you don't get it, Danielle told her. I'm the one who lost it. I really did want to kill her. And then I saw the blood and it made me crazy. What's wrong with me, Caroline? It was just so weird. Nothing's wrong except you need to calm down, Caroline replied, keeping her arm around Danielle. Let's forget about shopping today. Come on, I'll drive you home. Caroline doesn't want to believe that I'm so totally messed up, Danielle told herself as they drove away. How can she say nothing is wrong? Danielle glanced across the car at her friend. Caroline frowned and tensely bit her lip. Her hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly the knuckles were white. She does know something is wrong, Danielle thought, and she's afraid. Maybe she's even afraid of me. I got you now. You're dead meat. Danielle ducked down and held her breath. Silence. Where is he? Then she heard shuffling footsteps, loud breathing. She forced herself to keep still. The breathing got louder, the footsteps closer. Finally, a blonde head poked out from behind a large cardboard box. 
Danielle grinned at Ant her super soaker. Gotcha! she shouted and sprayed water onto her brother's chest. Cliff fell to his knees and tried to catch a stream of water in his mouth. Help! I'm drowning! Danielle laughed and pumped the water gun and sprayed him again. After the frightening scene yesterday, it felt good to be out in the backyard playing a game with her little brother. How'd you get me? Cliff asked when Danielle's gun was empty. He pulled up his drenched t-shirt. It wasn't exactly hard, Danielle told him as they refilled their water guns from a faucet on the side of the house. You walk like an elephant, Cliff, and I could hear you breathing a mile away. You sound like Aunt Margaret, Cliff complained. She's always telling me not to breathe through my mouth or else a bug's going to fly in. So, keep your mouth shut, Danielle advised. Yeah, okay. Cliff squirted water on her arm. Come on, I'll get you this time. The two of them ran to opposite ends of Cliff's cardboard fort and took cover. The cardboard was getting a little soggy, Danielle noticed. Hey, Cliff, she called. Your fort's going to collapse if it gets much wetter. Maybe you ought to find some wood and build another one. Cliff shouted a reply. Danielle couldn't make out the words. Now I know where he is, she thought. He falls for that trick every time. Danielle heard a soft thud. Grinning, she crept along the length of the fort and turned a corner. Her brother crouched in the dirt. Got you again, she yelled, aiming the water gun. Time out, Cliff protested. I hurt myself. Danielle rolled her eyes. Nice try, Cliff. I did. I fell and scraped my arm on one of the boxes. I didn't know cardboard was so sharp. Cliff stood up and held out his arm. See, it's bleeding. Danielle moved closer and stared. A small cut, about half an inch long. Bright red blood flowed down the slender arm. She reached out and took hold of her brother's arm. What are you doing? Cliff cried, trying to pull away. Danielle tightened her grip. That's gross, Danielle. Stop it. Cliff's protests buzzed annoyingly in her brain. The words made no sense to her. The cut filled all her senses, rich, red, pulsing. Danielle pressed her lips against Cliff's soft skin and hungrily lapped up the blood. Chapter 20 That night, Danielle pulled back the curtains on her bedroom window and gazed out at the backyard. The moon hovered over the silvery trees, low and full. Its bright light washed over Cliff's sagging cardboard fort. Danielle turned away from the window. I can't believe I did that, she thought, raising her hand to her mouth. I can't believe I drank Cliff's blood. Think about something else, she ordered herself. A song. Write a new song. Take your mind off what has been happening to you. Danielle lay down on the bed and propped her legs up on the windowsill. Closing her eyes, she let words and images drift in and out of her mind. She often composed this way without her guitar. Later, once she had all the words in her mind, she put them to music. After a while, the lyrics began to take shape. I'm at the window, howling at the moon, crying out my love, trying to get through, through to you. I'm howling, howling, howling my love, gotta claw my way back, back to you. Weird, Danielle thought. Howling my love, gotta claw my way back? More than weird, frightening. Why am I writing things like this? Stuff about clawing and howling and killing? Danielle opened her eyes and sat up. Outside, the moon seemed brighter. She shivered and reached for the curtain. Her arm stopped in midair. That shadow on Cliff's fort, was it there before? Every muscle tensed as Danielle watched the shadow slide across the tattered cardboard and into the cold light of the moon. Someone lurked in the backyard, staring up at her bedroom window. Chapter 21 Danielle ducked back in the folds of the curtain. Hidden in the darkness, she struggled to catch her breath. Then, cautiously, she peered around the curtain again. A face, pale in the moonlight, tilted toward her window. Billy's face. Danielle leaned out the window. Billy, she called in a loud whisper. What are you? Wait, I'll come down. She didn't want to wake her aunt and Cliff. On tiptoe, Danielle made her way downstairs and into the kitchen. She unlocked the back door and eased it open. Billy crept inside. In the glow of the moonlight that followed him into the room, Danielle could see that he was nervous. His hazel eyes darted around the kitchen, not meeting Danielle's gaze. His hands stayed jammed into the pockets of his faded cutoffs. Something was wrong. What is it? Danielle asked. And how come you came sneaking through the yard like that? You really scared me. Sorry, I... Billy's gaze shifted to the kitchen door. I started to the front door, but I didn't see any lights, and I didn't want to disturb your aunt. What's the matter? The matter? Nothing. Billy glanced around the kitchen again. I, uh, I wanted to make sure you're ready for tomorrow night's show. Danielle stared at him. Billy wouldn't stake out her backyard at midnight just to make sure she was ready for a performance. Billy? The show is here in Shadyside, Billy interrupted quickly. Makes it a lot easier, right? No packing, no driving, no depressing hotels. 
Right, Danielle agreed. What is his problem, she wondered, studying his face. It'll be good to play in front of a hometown audience, he went on. The manager says we're sold out. That's great. Billy took his hands out of his pockets, put them on his hips, then shoved them back in his pockets again. He stared at his feet. Billy, what is it, she demanded. You're so nervous, you're giving me the creeps. At last, Billy met her gaze. Danielle jerked away. His eyes! His eyes gleamed with desperation. Licking his lips, Billy shifted his weight and began inching toward Danielle. Danielle, I have... What? Danielle cried. She took another step back and bumped into a kitchen chair. What is it? Just tell me! Billy kept moving closer to Danielle. Bad news, he whispered. I have very bad news. Chapter 22 Bad news? Danielle edged around the chair and glanced toward the door leading into the hallway. She suddenly wanted to get away from him. Fast. What is it? It's D, Billy answered. D? Danielle stopped moving. What about D? She quit the band. Danielle stared at him. She quit? Billy nodded. I would have talked her out of it, but she didn't tell me in person. She left me a note. Did she say why? Not really, Billy replied. She wrote that she couldn't handle what was happening. She meant me. I know she did, Danielle declared. She hated me. Hated having to share the lead with me, and... No, Billy broke in. It wasn't you, Danielle. He closed the gap between them. I know it wasn't because of you. Then why, Danielle asked. Secretly, she felt relieved. It would be great to not have Dee glaring at me anymore, Danielle thought. Why else would she leave, Danielle demanded. I, Billy broke off. He cleared his throat tensely. Never mind, he told her. Listen, I better go. Sorry about scaring you before. See you tomorrow at rehearsal. Billy pushed open the screen door and quickly melted into the shadows of the backyard. Danielle didn't try to stop him. She shut the inner door and bolted it, glad he was gone. I'm shaking, Danielle realized. Billy scared me. He acted so strangely. I could see he didn't tell me everything. What is he hiding? Back up in her own room, Danielle closed the curtain and flopped down on her bed. Useless to try to write anything now. She couldn't stop thinking about Billy's visit and D. What did Billy want to say about D? He was definitely keeping something from her. Danielle jumped up and began to pace the room. She had the creeps, and being alone made it worse. She needed someone to talk to, to be with. She picked up the phone next to her bed and listened to the dial tone for a few seconds. Who should she call? Caroline? No. Kit. Kit with his cool, dark-lashed eyes and his warm smile. Kit, who cared about her. Kit lived alone in the carriage house of a North Hills estate. It was late, but Danielle didn't care if she woke him up. She needed to talk to him. Kit answered on the first ring. Kit? Danielle, he replied. Hey, I'm glad you called. Danielle smiled, happy to hear his voice. Me too. What's up? Nothing. I just... Danielle paused. I just wanted to talk to somebody. To you, I mean. Well, that's good to hear. But you sound kind of stressed out, Kit said. Is anything wrong? Not really. Well, maybe, Danielle admitted. Billy was here. He left about five minutes ago. Kit's voice rose in surprise. What was he doing there? I'm not sure, Danielle replied. He told me about Dee quitting the band. Yeah, he called me a couple of hours ago with the news. Now Kit sounded annoyed. Nice of Dee to give us so much notice, huh? Did Billy tell you about the note she wrote? Danielle asked. Yeah, but it didn't make any sense to me, Kit sighed. Anyway, you said you weren't sure why Billy came to see you. What did you mean? I don't know. He only talked about Dee, but I got the feeling he wanted to say something more. Danielle shivered, remembering the way Billy acted. He was really uptight, Kit. Well, he's got a lot on his mind, especially now that Dee's gone, Kit reminded her. He's usually pretty cool, but I guess I kind of freaked him out. But don't worry about Billy. He's a good guy. Is he? Danielle wondered. She used to think so. A great guy, actually. But now she wasn't sure. Something about Billy really troubled her. Danielle, you still there? I'm here, she said. I, I'm just a little messed up. Kit tisk tisk. Well, it doesn't sound as if I'm doing much good. Hey, you want me to come over? I'd love to, Danielle replied quickly. You sure it's not too late? Are you kidding? The later the better, Kit said. I'm a night owl, remember? Okay, great, Danielle thought a second. But don't come to the door, okay? My aunt's asleep. I'll meet you out front, and we can take a walk. Right. Be there in ten minutes. Eight minutes later, Danielle slipped out the front door. She changed from her worn t-shirt into a new blue tank top, brushed her hair, and put on a little makeup. She couldn't shake the jitters from Billy's visit. 
but that didn't mean she couldn't look good for Kit. He arrived a moment later, killing the engine on his white Mustang and coasting quietly to a stop at the curb. You look great, he complimented her as he joined her on the sidewalk. Thanks, Daniel smiled, feeling calmer with Kit around. So do you. Kit glanced down at his ragged jeans and ratty sneakers. He grinned and grabbed her hand. Come on, let's walk. They strolled in silence. The moon dipped in and out from behind scattered clouds. Danielle swallowed hard. For once, the cold moonlight wasn't affecting her, wasn't making her feel strange. Weird, she thought. Usually, I'd be shivering, feeling different, frightened, but not this time. It must be Kit, she thought, turning to him. He makes me feel warm and safe. As if he felt her gaze, Kit smiled at her. You're not so nervous now, he commented. Do you want to talk about Billy's visit? Danielle shook her head. I thought I would, but I don't. Well, okay, Kit replied softly. It's just that I thought he upset you and he wanted to tell me about it. I don't, Danielle repeated. I want to forget it. Kit let go of her hand and put his arm around her shoulder, but Danielle shrugged it off. She stared up at the moon and felt a sudden rush of energy. You know what I want? She asked. I want to run. Come on, Kit, let's run. Without waiting for him to respond, Danielle took off down Fear Street. Behind her, she heard Kit call her name, but she kept going, laughing, running faster. Hey, Danielle, whoa, Kit shouted from behind her. You're way ahead. Wait up. Come on and catch me, Danielle shouted back without slowing down. Danielle loved the rush of wind in her face and hair, the pounding of her heart, the slap slap of her sneakers. Faster, she urged herself. Faster. Danielle, she heard Kit call far behind her. But Danielle didn't stop, didn't want to stop. Why am I doing this, Danielle asked herself. Why am I running like mad in the middle of the night? She didn't know. She didn't care. She couldn't think. All she could do was run like a stampeding horse, like a wild animal. Danielle! She could barely hear Kit. He'd never catch up. The wind shifted. Danielle sniffed. Her eyes narrowed and she stopped. She stood still, listening. Something close by. An animal. Something small. She could hear its tiny heart racing with fear. She could smell it. There, in the side yard of that house. A rabbit. A small, plump rabbit. Danielle's mouth watered. With one snap of her teeth, she'd be able to taste the rabbit's blood. As silently as she could, she leaped over a low hedge and bounded across the yard. The rabbit stood frozen for a split second, then darted away. Danielle lowered her head, urged her legs forward. I can catch him, she thought. I know I can. I can taste the blood already. Chapter 23 Hey, whoa! Billy's sharp voice cut through the chatter like a knife. In case you forgot, we've got a show tonight. You want to try rehearsing instead of standing around, shooting the breeze. Mary Beth frowned. We've been rehearsing, Billy. Now we're on a break. Lighten up. Rehearsing? Is that what it was? He shot back. Could have fooled me. Maybe if you try a little harder, we might be good enough to play for birthday parties. Billy made a big deal checking his watch. Five minutes, he called loudly as he strode away from the stage. Wow, Caroline muttered to Danielle. What's his problem? Danielle shook her head. Whatever had bothered Billy last night was still troubling him, but she didn't know what it was. Well, I would wish he'd cool it, Mary Beth grumbled. Tonight's supposed to be fun. Bad moonlight comes home to Shadyside and all that, and he's ruining it with his attitude. Mary Beth was right, Danielle thought. They were all looking forward to playing in Shadyside, especially at Red Heat, the most popular teen dance club in town. Tonight's show was sold out. Red Heat had been a huge warehouse, so sold out meant an audience of more than 200 people. Everybody in the band had been really pumped when they arrived at the club to rehearse, but Billy's sour mood had quickly brought them down. What was wrong with him? A husky voice broke into Danielle's thoughts. Hey, Danielle, please tell me that Billy isn't always like this. Shauna Davidson, the singer replacing Dee, stepped over to Danielle, brushing out her straight black hair. She was a friend of Kit's. He had called her early this morning. She jumped at the chance to be part of Bad Moonlight. Tall and slender, Shauna was easygoing, with sparkling brown eyes and a good sense of humor. Danielle could tell she was surprised by the manager's mood. The first run-through sounded pretty good to me, Shauna continued, but I'm not about to argue with Billy, not on my first day with the band. Billy's not always like this, Danielle assured her. I don't know what's wrong, Shauna, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have anything to do with the way we sounded. Shauna glanced at her watch. Three minutes left. Guess I'd better get ready. Danielle turned from Shauna and bumped into Kit, who was kneeling next to one of the amplifiers. 
Good. Two extra hands. Kit smiled at her. You want to hold this cable for me? Sure. Danielle held the fat cable while Kit wrapped black electrical tape around it. When his long fingers brushed hers, she drew back. Kit glanced up. Was it something I said? He asked. Excuse me? He cut the tape and stood up. Well, you jumped just now when I touched your hand. And last night, the way you ran away from me, I thought maybe I'd said something or done something to turn you off. No, nothing, Danielle told him. And it wasn't running away from you, Kit. I was just running. Funny. She remembered running, but she didn't remember where or why. Danielle uttered a nervous laugh. Guess I was a little jumpy just now because of Billy, she explained to Kit. He's acting so strange. Yeah, Kit frowned. I'd sure like to know why. So would I, Danielle thought. Something to do with D, I'll bet. He must be furious because she quit so suddenly. Okay, kiddies, Billy shouted, striding quickly toward the stage. Recess is over. Time to work. Picking up their instruments, the members of the band quickly took their places. Danielle had changed the lyrics of the song she'd written the night before. This morning, she'd worked out the music. She played the opening notes, then began to sing. I'm at the window, staring at the moon, crying out my love, trying to get through, through to you. On the refrain, Shauna joined in. I'm crying, 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 my love. Gotta find my way back, back to you. Their voices blended well. Danielle's high and clear. Shauna's low and throaty. Danielle was happy with it, but Mary Beth thought it sounded too tame. It needs something, she insisted. Danielle laughed. You should have heard the first lyrics. Instead of staring at the moon, it was howling, and it wasn't gotta find my way back, it was gotta claw my way back. Mary Beth's green eyes lit up. That's more like it, she declared. Let's try it. The old lyrics still made Danielle uncomfortable, but when they finished the song, Caroline and Mary Beth gave her a thumbs up. Danielle tried to shrug off the uneasy feeling. When they finished that song, they ran through some others and ended with Bad Moonlight. All right, Caroline cried when the session was over. Shady Side is going to rock tonight. Nice work, Shauna, Mary Beth told the new singer. We're going to be better than ever now. Billy didn't comment on the band's performance. Showtime is at nine, he announced. Everybody be here at eight. Two and a half hours. Danielle planned to go home, shower, and eat. Maybe catch a short nap. But first, she wanted to talk to Billy, find out what was troubling him. She caught up to him as he crossed the dance floor to the entrance. Billy? He stopped and turned, obviously annoyed. Danielle gulped in a deep breath. I know you've got a lot in your mind, but Billy, what's the matter? She burst out. You're so angry, and last night you were all nervous and jumpy. Billy stared at her, his eyes wide in the red and blue lights of the converted warehouse. Danielle watched him lick his lips and swallow hard. He didn't reply, didn't say a word to her. Instead, he turned away and hurried out the door. Danielle arrived back at Red Heat a few minutes before eight. Billy leaned close to Kit on the stage, talking intensely. Caroline and Mary Beth rehearsed their intro to one of the songs. Yo, Danielle called, crossing the big dance floor. I thought I'd be early, but you guys beat me here. Kit smiled. So did Mary Beth and Caroline. Billy glanced at her, then turned away. Anybody seen Shauna yet? He asked. I'm here. The entrance door slammed shut, and Shauna hurried toward the stage. Good, Billy said. Caroline and Mary Beth wanted to work on something with you. Sure, Shauna caught her breath. My base is upstairs. I'll go get it. I'll get it, Danielle offered. She held up her red dress, covered in plastic. I've got to put this up there anyway. Thanks, it's in the big trunk, Shauna said. Be right back. Danielle crossed to the circular metal staircase that led up to the loft. A couple of dressing rooms were crammed into the low-ceilinged area above the main floor of the warehouse. The rest of the space held extra lights, cables, and other equipment. Danielle reached the top and flipped on the overhead lights. She hung her dress on a garment rack in the first dressing room, then went to get Shauna's guitar. The big trunk Shauna had instructed her. Glancing around the shadowy storage area, Danielle discovered three big trunks. Two of them were shoved back against the wall and covered with dust. Must be the first one, she decided. She examined it. It was a tall, black, upright trunk with three heavy metal clasps. Danielle started to pry the clasps open. Wow, it is boiling hot up here, she thought. She wiped her hand across her forehead, brushing away beads of perspiration. The trunk had been jammed between some cardboard boxes and a stack of folding metal chairs. Danielle grasped the trunk handle and struggled to slide it out. It didn't budge. 
What did Shauna have in here with her base? A ton of bricks? The cardboard boxes were loaded with colored gels for the spotlights. Danielle shoved them out of the way. Then, leaning over the trunk, she pulled the lid open and peered inside. No! She let out a low cry. Dee's body tumbled out, slashed to pieces. Chapter 24 Dee's body toppled onto Danielle's shoes. Danielle staggered back. She opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Dee's t-shirt and jeans were blood-soaked and cut to pieces. Deep, long scratches ran down her arms. Scratches covered her neck as if an animal had clawed at her throat. Raising both hands to her face, Danielle backed away, crashing into a microphone stand. It fell with a loud clang. She barely heard it. Her heart hammered. A loud roar filled her ears. She squeezed her eyes shut, then forced them open again. As Danielle stared down in horror, she pictured herself in that frightening fantasy, running with Dee on the track, running after her, attacking her. Once again, Danielle saw the real fight they'd had in the parking lot outside Dr. Moore's, snarling and wrestling in the gravel, going for Dee's throat. She had wanted to kill Dee, wanted to tear Dee to pieces. And now Dee lay at her feet, torn to pieces as in Danielle's violent fantasy, clawed and scratched to death as Joey had been. Dee and Joey, did I do this? Did I murder Dee? The terrifying question burst into Danielle's mind. She shook her head hard. Of course I didn't murder them. Of course I'm not a murderer. She couldn't remember what had happened that night in the park with Joey. And Dee? Danielle couldn't remember. Couldn't remember. Dr. Moore had assured her that she wouldn't act out her violent fantasies. But what if he was wrong? A violent shudder ripped through Danielle. Get out, she urged herself. Get out of here. Now. Danielle tripped over the fallen light pole and landed heavily on the floor. Pain shot through her knee, but she ignored it. Gasping for breath, she scrambled to her feet and raced down the narrow corridor. Someone waited at the top of the stairs. Billy! Danielle staggered to a stop. He watched her, not speaking. She stared into his eyes, her mind racing. Billy acted so nervous last night when he told her about Dee quitting the band. So nervous he frightened her. He was hiding something. Was he hiding Dee's murder? Did Billy know that Dee was dead when he came to visit Danielle? Was that why he acted so strangely? Did Billy murder Dee? Why? Why would Billy murder Dee? Billy shifted his weight and narrowed his eyes at Danielle. He knows, Danielle realized. He knows that I discovered Dee's body. I have to get away. Have to get help. Get out of my way, she screamed at him. Billy didn't move. He blocked her way to the stairs. Let me out, she shrieked in panic. Let me out of here. No, Danielle. Billy reached toward her. I'm sorry. I can't let you go now.